Hi, I'm Kerry Lord from Toft. This video forms part of a series to accompany the Edwards Crochet kits, patterns and books. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the loop stitch. This is a slight extension on the normal double crochet stitch and you tend to be using it when you're going to add a lovely texture to what you're crocheting. So sometimes you might be doing it and leaving it as a loop. Other times you might be doing it creating loops and cutting them to get more of a shaggy hair effect. So just to recap before we start, it's an extension on that double crochet stitch. So your normal double crochet stitch, you put your hook in through the next stitch along, right beneath both Vs. Yarn over and bring that through to the point where you've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over and through those two loops. So to do your loop stitch, I'm going to show you a method where I use my thumb and this is because I hold my hook overhand and I hold my yarn um, in my left hand. If you're somebody that holds your hook slightly differently, so if you hold it underneath the hook, you might find that you'll have to adapt the technique slightly to use your finger rather than, than your thumb, which might make the technique then slightly easier for you to do. It's not difficult, it just feels very clumsy when you start. All I can reassure you is that it will get quicker the more you do. So to do a loop stitch in this next stitch, First I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to put it through the stitch, so right beneath both stitches. What that does is it means that I'm holding the work on my hook hand and so my yarn hand is free to make a loop and make, make the movement that I need to do. So I grab the yarn through my fingers and make a thumbs up. Then I take my thumb down the back of the yarn, so move it away from my body down the back of the yarn and back up towards me to create a loop on my thumb. And then the important bit is to yarn over with this yarn here. So it's the strand of yarn that's coming round the back of your thumb. You can see you've got a cross there created with your yarn from your work. Bring your hook underneath and yarn over with that there. And what that's doing is it's creating a nice little knot and tie in the stitch as you do it, which then means that if you are going to cut those loop, it's not going to unravel. So yarn over with that, pull that back through the stitch that you're working to the point where you've got two loops on your hook. And what you're going to do is just finish the stitch off as normal. But at this point, and what I need to say is this is the important bit really of the stitch where you can set the length of your loop. So if you're working from a pattern, it will usually state um, if how long the loop should be. If it doesn't state how long the loop should be, it will be the standard loop length, which is two centimeters. Now, when measuring that loop length, what you're going to do, the measurement will be from the fabric, so from the stitch where the loop starts until the end point of the loop. It's not the full circumference of that loop's piece of yarn, it's from the fabric to the end of the loop. The reason I've stated it that way is because um, quite often you'll be cutting these loops and it makes it far easier for you to just make nice long loops and then you can always trim them down to the lengths that you want to afterwards, especially say when doing Edwards Menagerie Dogs. So just to recap, that loop length can be adjusted at this stage to be as short or as long as you want it to be. And the length of loop is measured from the fabric, so from the base of the stitch that it's come out of to the tip of the loop. So another thing to mention at this stage is when I wrote the first Edwards Menagerie book, um, everything that I read about this loop stitch online told me that it as was a stitch that was worked onto the wrong side of the fabric. Um, and you can see it does naturally fall to the wrong side of the fabric when you work it. So the whole of that first book, and Blake the orangutan himself, is crocheted entirely inside out. But after I'd made the first animals and then I moved on to the birds, I quickly discovered that with one easy movement, I can get these loops onto the right side of my fabric. So if I'm using them just sparingly, say for some eyebrows on a schnauzer, I can just work the few stitches that I need to onto the right side of the fabric and then I'm not having to pull them through afterwards. So to do that, take the loop, pass it across at this stage where you've still got these two loops on your hook, pass it across to the right side, yarn over and finish your stitch off, hold that loop in place and then just go on to your next stitch as normal. So I'll recap all of that in a smooth movement now that we've done one of them um, successfully. So I'm going to work a loop stitch into this next stitch along put my hook in through that next stitch, grab the yarn through my fingers and make a thumbs up, take my thumb around the back and then up towards so that I've got a nice crossover on my yarn, yarn over with this bit here that's coming around the back of the thumb, pull that through the stitch to this point where I've got two loops, adjust my loop length if I need to, pass it to the front and then finish the stitch off as normal. <laughs> 